and welcome back to the Flash Action Script 3.0 Sound Programming Video Textbook. Yeah, where we're showing you how to make billions of dollars online by mastering the most powerful tool for web media in the world today. Yeah, see? Yeah. A lot of people have come to the Dalella PHP forums and they have said, Adam, you have these cool players and everything and that's fine, but I don't want it to autoplay. How do I make my MP3 player not autoplay? Very, very simple. And that will be the focus of this lesson. So we're right where we left off last time to where when we press control enter the sound is playing and the right and left peak things are doing their thing. Alright. So there's a movie clip that our sound code is contained within. So let's double click on that. And here we are in its inner timeline. And this is the code we last left off with. And that's pretty much it so far. So it auto plays right when your file loads. Some people might not want that. So what you do is you go into the top here. You type in var autoplay, and this will be a boolean. So you put colon boolean equal to false. Now, once you have that variable in, you simply go here, right here, line seven, where it says channel equals sound dot play. That's where the sound starts up and plays. So just bring that down a few lines, and right here you type in an if condition nest. Open curly brace, close curly brace. Within the parentheses, we're going to evaluate the autoplay variable. So if autoplay equal true, then we're going to start up the sound. So let's grab these two lines of code that start up the sound. And you also have to grab these listeners, this enter frame event listener put that in there as well or else you'll get an error and this complete event listener put that in there as well now let's press control enter see nothing happens because we have set our autoplay boolean variable to false and what a boolean variable is just something that lets you toggle between true and false so if I turn this to true right now and I press control enter there it is it plays because my if statement's evaluation, if autoplay is equal to true, then I play the sound and blah, 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 blah. So in this instance, when you load your player, and this is set to not autoplay, a value of false, that means the user needs a play button to press. That way they can start the sound up. So let's do that right now. So in order to save time, I'm just going to go to Window, Common Libraries, Buttons, I'm going to go all the way down to playback rounded and I'm going to take out rounded gray play. Pop it where I want it. I'm going to make sure it's not on my action script 3 layer. Control X off of that layer. I'm going to lock that layer so I can't accidentally put anything there because I don't want any assets there. I just want the code there. So I'm going to go into the stuff layer where it should be. Press Control Shift V. Put it back where it was. Now I'm going to give an instance name of play btn. Actually, let's give it an instance name of play underscore btn. That way we get code hints when we type that in to the actions panel. You'll get code hints if you have a an object with an instance name of either underscore btn or underscore nc or underscore mc. If it's a movie clip, underscore mc will give you code hints. And if it's a button symbol, underscore btn will also give you code hints. Whereas if you didn't have it set up like that, you would not see the code hints. I hope that makes sense. And some of you know what I'm talking about. But it's just handy. If you have a button, you put underscore btn. If you have a movie clip, you put underscore mc, and you'll get magic code hints. Trust me. <laughs> and you may wish to design your own fancy-looking buttons. You know, take the time to make your player look real unique. But just for tutorial's sake, I'm just going to use the pre-baked button. Now, in order to program our play button, we need one more variable that's a boolean. And this one's going to be called is playing. And if any of you have programmed sound before or programmed a player, you know the is playing variable well. And that's going to be false right when the application loads. And you change that is playing boolean variable to true anytime your sound starts up. So right here, under where it says sound.play where the sound actually starts up, is playing, should be turned to true. And you can remove that boolean and the var because the variable's already 
defined here. So you can just put is playing equals true there. And that's a very important part of things when you go to toggling play and stop and all that. So that means we're also going to want to take that variable in the playback complete event, the function that fires off when the sound finishes playing, you also want to put that in there. Is playing equals false because the sound would be over. Done. Finished. Okay, so now all we need is a play button click event listener and a little function that's going to start the sound to play. So I'm just going to go down to the very bottom under the playback complete event and put a little comment to myself. Play button functionality. And I'm going to put in a listener here. So you see it says play underscore btn. I think that's what I named my button. Play underscore btn dot add event listener mouse event click. And the function that's going to fire off is going to be play sound. Okay, so here's your little play function. So function play sound is a mouse event function. And it happens when anybody clicks on that play button. So inside of the function we have an if condition statement to evaluate whether or not is playing is true or false. So if is playing is equal to false, then and only then do we start up the channel sound to play. And pretty much I took everything, all these lines right here, these five lines, are the same exact five lines that are in this if evaluation that we just put in a minute ago that was saying if autoplay is equal to true we start up the sound and add the listeners we need so I just did the same thing here if somebody hits the play button if you have it programmed to where autoplay is false so let's see what happens press control enter hit the play button and you'll notice that if I hit the play button again it doesn't start up again that's a common problem when people are programming sound so within that play function you say if is playing is equal to false then and only then you start up the sound to play because if is playing is equal to true you start up the sound again you're gonna have a problem because you'll have two sounds playing on top of each other alright so now let's see if this player works the way we intended to so right now we have it set to auto play false so that means when we control enter it shouldn't auto play and we have to click the play button to start it up and that's what we have so if we change this to true everything should remain cool and all the code should still work but the sound will auto play because now our auto play boolean variable is set to true and our player is sensing whether or not that is set to true or not so there you go now if I click this nothing happens because is playing is set to true that very important is playing boolean variable. Alright, so I think in the next lesson we'll show how to create the ever popular play pause toggle button. That way when you hit this play button, if a sound is playing, and I was to hit this play button, I want this to change to a pause symbol. So if that changes to a pause symbol, the sound is paused, and when I hit it again, the sound resumes. That's the kind of button we'll show you how to make in the next lesson.